Good morning. Welcome to Bars and Bells. My name is Ian. I'm Lauren. Today we will be using our body weight and our kettlebells off to the side here for a strength and mobility practice. First, let's check in with our breath. Talk to the core and the spine. Play with your core and your spine. Let your mouth do the talking. But if your body is speaking to you in not polite ways today, slow it down, get back to those basics, and stay strong. I'll be in this position. How are you going to start your breathing today, Lauren? Mm, well, now that you're asking, I'll lie down. I'll lie down. Get in a position that's comfortable for you. We'll be here just for a couple moments. Go ahead. With one hand on the belly, place one hand on the chest. Breathe in to that belly. Big breath in through the nose. And exhale through the nose. As Lauren gets settled here, we'll do that one more time. Oh. Breathe into the belly. Four seconds in, close mouth, and exhale for four seconds as well. Now keep that bottom hand calm. Feel the expansion in the top hand as we breathe into the rib cage. 360 around the spine, and exhale. Repeat one last time. Bottom hand stays calm. Top hand moves, and exhale. Come back to that bottom hand. Take a breath in, feel that belly rise. Exhale. Now brace your abs like it could take a punch and breathe in underneath of that. And exhale. Relaxing the abs, breathe into the chest, breath in. Four seconds full and four seconds empty. And now brace those abs and breathe into that chest. And exhale. Twice more through, putting it all together. Breath into that belly. Exhale. Brace those abs for a punch. Breath into the belly. Keep the abs set. Exhale. Now with those abs set, breathe into the chest. Exhale, keep those abs braced one last time, breathing into the chest, and exhale. How'd you do? Were you able to breathe from behind the shield or the abdominal wall there, or did it continue to go down? Both are right. In our kind of strength, the deadlifts or our strength practice, breathe behind that front shield. From here, it's all fours and wrists and cat and cow articulating through the spine. Fingertips down first. Straighten the elbows. Starting at the tailbone tilt, head neutral. Press into the floor with the shoulder blades retracted or pulling together. From here, pull the hands towards the knees, creating tension on the floor. And using the core strength of your abs, slowly tuck your tail or round your flexing your lumbar spine. Then press forward through the hands, backwards through the toes, and anterior tip in the hips or tailbone towards the ceiling. From your safe ranges of motion there, continue to pull or preload like lifting that kettlebell and tuck or flex the lumbar spine by recruiting those abdominals, those six pack abs on the front to pull your low back into a rounding shape. Press the floor forward one last time in the anterior tip of the hips. From here, I'll find the middle ground between those two positions that might be that neutral spine word. And from here, the upper back. Pull the rib cage onto the hips, rounding the upper back slightly. Then pull the shoulder blades together to ensure that it was the spine doing it and not the shoulder blades. Then on those abs, and lift or press the sternum towards forward. The tailbone is slightly tucking under as the upper back is extending. Relax tension, reset. Grips, straight elbows, head position is looking between those hands. On those abdominals, slight lumbar flexion or that tailbone tucked underneath as we press the sternum forward. 
This is pretty intense. It's also pretty small. Relax. Now with the head and neck, look forward, press extension, and then pull the chin down, crown up head away, and minimize the range. Maximize the range, but it might be a minimal shape. Then, with the chin pulling down, extend. That rule of opposites apply here. Pull down to go up, and then pull down the chin to lift the crown away. Press through the floor, extend into this tall and hips position. And from here, I like to imagine that you had a kettlebell in this goblet hold. If we had a kettlebell, we might be grabbing it by the horns, catcher's grip around, many ways to do it. Today, we'll just pretend. In this position here, elevate the shoulders or shrug, and then pull down. Now, take these hands and picture frame your head face, forearm towards the forehead, and then continue to bring that around the body and back into our goblet position here. Switch your direction, making sure that the armpit stays engaged, and we pull around returning to the goblet hold. A couple more times each way, the armpit stays low to lift the hand overhead and pulls around with control. Same thing going the other way with two hands, the armpits are pulling down, bringing the head around, excuse me, the hand around the head. Last one each way, did you squeeze your butt? Are you wearing that rib cage onto those hips? One last time the other way, Extend the hips for strength, plank tension, which we'll highlight in a second, and mobilize through those shoulders. From here, I love Lauren's cues for the down dog, so I'll throw it over to her and get up to standing through our down dog. With your hands on the floor, gently tuck your toes. Before we go anywhere, let's slowly tilt our tailbone to the ceiling. Then lift your knees off the floor. Keep that tailbone long as you lift your to the ceiling, gently try to extend or straighten your knees. Heels are working towards the floor. Rebend those knees, tilt the tail again to the ceiling, try to straighten, keeping that tailbone nice and long. Breathe. And one last time, knee bend, tail tilt, gently straighten. And then we're going to bend our knees. Walk our hands back and stand up via our hinge. So hips will go back, hips extend through to tall. Shake that out. Nice. From here, we'll work on our three position squat, warming up our three positions as well as some balance. Have a balance aid if you need it. Otherwise, in space here, feet underneath you facing parallel. Gently press your knees towards over your toes. Drive into the floor to extend up, pulling your kneecaps up and squeezing your butts and always bracing your core. Repeat, knees over toes and then extend to tall. One last time, knees over toes. We'll press through the tallness and grow even taller into a two-footed balance. Press those hips forward, kneecaps up, hold, and then keep those legs straight as we slowly press our heels into the floor. Once you're down, externally rotate to that first position. Try to get heels fairly close to each other. Before you move, pull your legs together and then press the knees towards over the toes. Press into the floor to stand up tall, all the way tall. Repeat, pull together to press knees over toes. Drive down and away to tall. Last one, pull together to go low. Drive down and away to tall and keep growing up in this one. Holding, pressing the inside of your heels forward, hips forward, knees stay straight as we descend. Nice. Point, toe ball, heel, land. Feel the adduction or that pull to center as you press your knees over your toes. Your knees pry out a little bit. Drive down and away to tall. Repeat, pull the floor together, sending your knees over your toes. Drive down and away to tall. And last one, feel the pull. And then down and away. Press those heels forward as you come up. Holding for three, two, slowly land. Point. Transfer close. And Shake transfer it out. Transfer close. Transfer close. Continuing with the knee bending, 
assemble your feet in a narrow stance. Pull that energy away next to that standing leg. Pull that and then press that to the floor. Same thing on the other side. Pull on up, squeeze in tight, cramp the standing leg, close the eyes for an additional challenge, hold for three and two. Ooh, that's hard. And then down. That side's hard, Lauren says. Did you have a harder side? All good if you do. There. Practice. Same idea, but continuing on. Pull up, and then extend, land, toe ball heel. And then here, freestyle, sort of, but posterior tuck first. And with that posterior tuck or front of hips going that way, just a little bit of the hula shape. Maybe two or three. Here, I'm going counterclockwise. And then in center, we'll switch that direction to go clockwise. Avoid that feeling in the lumbar. Maintain safety for the spine by tucking under. Stability here, mobility in the hips. Once we return center, press forward, come back. Switch, pick up, extend, land toe ball heel. Balance in the middle. With this position, clockwise or counterclockwise, a little bit. Of that hip hula. Keep the energy or the work in the hips. Limit the sensation in the lumbar spine by maintaining that posterior tuck. If you haven't switched directions, it's about that time switching for the last one. And then press forward, come back. One more time to the sides. Pull up, open from that hip, extend, and right. Out here, same thing. Keep the tuck of the heel bone just a little bit to maintain the movement in the hips and the stability through the trunk. I switch directions. I'm on that lap. I'm on that last repetition. And then returning to center, pressing forward this bar, go away. Last time to the side. Pull up, extend, and land. Staying square forward. Slight posterior tuck, little bit of the hula action to warm up those hip holsters, all in socket. Mobility component. Yep. Switch your direction, couple in and as we go. We're breathing throughout, turning to center, and then pressing to come home. Hinges, hinges to pick up loads in today's practice. Throwing it back to Lauren, cueing the hinge, couple in a row, and then those hard style planks. With your feet slightly wider than your hips pointed forward, just rock back and forth from your heel to your toes to find that nice footfall that's comfortable for you. Now, standing tall, move forward a bit, more forward. Get out of the rad, there we go. Now we can see Ian's hips hinge back. We're gonna chop our hips, pressing our hips back. So if you're looking at Ian here for those cues, you can see the nice neutral spine, hips are back, loaded through our hamstrings and our glutes, shins remain vertical. Press your feet into the floor and drive in and out as you stand up tall all the way through. Extend to tall, squeeze your butts, brace your abs. Let's do that two more times. Chop your hips back, nice neutral spine. Have a peek down. Are your knees still over top of your ankles? Or are they starting to drift forward over the instep of your foot? Push your butt back to load that up. Drive down and away to tall. This time out of our hinge, we'll do our chop back. We'll break some rules as we tip forward and walk ourselves out into our first high plank. With our hands underneath our shoulders, our toes tucked, drop those hips, hips connecting ribs to hips, squeezing your butt, pulling the floor together underneath you. I couldn't move you if I came through the screen and tried to. For five, four, three, two. From here, place your knees down. And we're slowly going to end up on the floor to our backside to get up via a get up. Let's do our left side first today. Line on your back with your left arm across your chest. Place your left knee bent and foot flat on the floor. Push that left foot into the floor, feeling tension go up the back of your leg and into your butt cheek. Now relax. Do it again. Press into the floor. Feel that butt cheek squeeze. It might even come off the floor. And relax. This time, push so hard into the floor, 
drive and pull on that elbow to your tall sit with that nice proud shoulder find your hand packed lifting hips sweeping through press the hand away to extend your hips forward front foot moves to square up using both legs hop to tall throw your bell Chuck awesome. it away. continuing the hinge one more time in the body weight version before we get into the loaded carries. We've been working for the past two months of holding in the firing range, the low and those racks positions. We'll get there in a second. Body weight cues one more time. Setting up that hinge stance, rocking on the feet as Lauren suggested. Chop those hips, press back. Take a breath, belly in and out. And then brace those abs and take a breath in and out. Pressing the feet into the ground. One more time. Hinge, vertical shins, rooted feet, crown of head pulling away from the hips. What's your checklist doing today? From there, we'll tip forward just a little bit, lengthen out into our high planks position. And again, for 10 seconds, create tension. Good, full body, go. Going means pulling the hands to feet, squeezing the butt cheeks. Armpits pulling towards hips, and re squeezing those butt cheeks, and then placing the knees on the floor. Rest. One more time. High planks position. Butt cheek squeeze. Pull tension into the floor, but you're pushing away too. That rule of opposites for four more seconds. High tension, high tension, and then easily find yourself to your back. If you follow along with Lauren, the left side first. Follow me on the right. On the right. With the right hand across the chest. The right knee is also bent. Also to the head. Cueing the hip extension, press the bent leg into the floor to send a slight better energy up the back of the leg. Relax. Again, don't go anywhere, but create that isometric, heavy work tension to preload, extending the hip, and then relax. This time, Reload. Yeah, drive the foot and roll to pull on that elbow. Transition to the tall sit. Push through the bent knee and the hand on the ground to bridge. Sweep the leg. Slide it up. Square it up. And we're standing. Whew. And then we'll shake it out right there. Loaded carries. I alluded to those just a moment ago. Do you have a kettlebell handy? Dumbbell is just fine too. The thing about a kettlebell that's nice is the handle's up a little bit higher than that dumbbell. If you're using a dumbbell at home, either turn it on its edge, looks like an hourglass, or underneath a yoga block or bring the floor up to make it a little bit easier maintaining the integrity of your hinge. I'll grab my belt too, and there Lauren is standing right over top. Standing right over top of your bell, the handle might be bisecting or perpendicular to those shins. Set up the hip chop, grab with two hands for this set. Without looking at the bell, I'm looking six feet in front of me with that neutral head. I'll crush it with my grip. I'll straighten the elbows. I'll lift my chest so that my shoulders line up with the knee and the foot. Is that a preloaded position? Does it feel like work? Then let go. Press down to stand up tall. That's the preload we're talking about, picking up 99% of that load without it ever leaving the floor. Gives your body feedback to say, hey, I'm into this, or whoa, I might want to choose a different load. Back off. Let's do that one more time. The preload, hinge, nice long spine, grip the kettlebell with the hands, straighten the elbows, pack those shoulders, preload as if you're pretending to lift. And then let go and body weight up. Stay there. If that's new for you, or if that's feeling like your strength and abilities today. Join us as we now carry that load in one arm out to the side for grip strength, core strength, and build a nice relationship with your kettlebell. Hip hinge. Grab it with one hand. This time, pack that shoulder. Are the shoulders level? Think of this as an anti rotating exercise and preload, drive to tall, assemble your feet, narrow stance if you wish, and hold for time. 
avoid the side flexion piece that I'm doing here. I'm just gonna take mine for a little walk. Those other side abs to go for a, a walk. Walking around are nice progressions as well, but holding in space, rooting yourself down into the floor, also strong, strong ideas. Then open up our stance, return that kettlebell to the ground with the shoulder square left and extend. Welcome back. Hello. Walking around with that kettlebell, a nice progression. Stay still first, and then by all means, go for the walk. Same thing on the other arm, other side. Set up the hip hinge, grab it with this left. I'm overselling this right now. Avoid that elevated shoulder, and again, square towards the bell. Preload, crush the grip to tall, adjust your stance. The bell will want to take you to its side, so you're going to say, hey, abdominals on the other side. Let's work to make it strong. The feet are rooting, the glutes are cramping, we're in the plank-like tension from the warm-up. For three more seconds, we'll hold it, we'll open it, hinging, shoulders square, let go, and body weight up. Whew. Working on all kinds of fun stuff that way. Squat time, that means it's your time. What kind of squats are we doing today? With the bell, out to the bell, without the bell, we're gonna squat. Let's come back to our narrow stance squat. Spice up our squats today in three different ways. Pressing the knees over the toes, normal squat in this sense. Shoulders are still stacked over top of hips, knees press over toe, stand tall. Either continue that for two more or join me as I add on. Knees press over toes. Can you lift the heels and just find a, a bent knee balance on those toes? For three, two, press the heels back down, stay in the same height, and then grow to tall. We'll add on one more from there. Knees over toes, heels lift, find your balance, stay on the balls of your feet as you straighten those knees. Hold, if we could, press those knees back over the toes, Find the heels to the floor, and then press to tall. Hmm. Shake it up. Nice. Alternating body weight versions of the squat with our loaded kettlebells. Last couple weeks again, we've gotten into the squats position to pick up our kettlebell to the goblet. Today, let's try it through what we might call a cheat clean, or again, using that hinge protocol. Let's let Lauren demonstrate one or two. Setting up in that same position, shh, Kettlebell right underneath of the hips. <sighs> Sorry, you were talking slow. So. Preload, preload, preload. There is a wall standing right in front of Lauren, and that kettlebell will zip up the body, ending up in that goblet hold. We'll hold it there for time. We'll return it to the ground through the same hinge protocol, and then up barehanded. Oh. Nice. She just wants to do so much work here. Barehanded. We'll let Lauren do more work, but here we go together. We'll try two times 10 second holds. Setting up over your kettlebell, two handed grip. Crush it. Pack the shoulders, preload the abs, and then when ready, pull it, yup, and hold it in that goblet hold. For 10, nine. As you can see, Lauren's grabbing it by the horns, the rib cage is connected to the hips, the glutes firmly squeezed. Return it to the floor, come up barehanded, reset. Does that feel something? Does that feel like something that you want to do again? Do you feel strong? Braced core, pat shoulders. If you're with us, one more time. Hip hinge, two hands on, preload, and zip, catch, hold it for 10. Squeeze your butt cheeks, press the feet into the floor, and breathe. And maybe feel the sweat rolling down your back now. And to the floor, and up. Those isometric movements, not too much action like this, but high work, really nice. Squat version number two. Squat version number two. From your parallel, gently turn out, like we practice in our warm up. same additions, but from the turned out position. Pulling the legs together, knees press over toes, drive down and away to tall. Pulling together, knees press over toes, finding a toe balance by taking the heels off the ground. Have your balance aid if needed. 
Press your heels back down, then press into the floor to grow tall. One more. Pull tension together. Roll off the heels. Stay on the balls of the feet as you press to grow to find that hold. Kneecaps up, hips pushing forward, core brace. Oh, nope, we didn't come down that way. We pressed our knees back over our toes. Then our heels fell on the floor, and then we stood up. Shake it out. Amazing. Can you guess where number three is going to go? A little wider, maybe. Can you guess where our next kettlebell hold is going? From two hands in the goblet, we like to transition to one. Typically, loading one side of the body is more challenging than sharing that load on both. At any time in the workout, regress your skills and feel free to incorporate the low hold or the goblet hold as we explore our rack position in this set. For that, I'm gonna ask Lauren to demonstrate again. Two hands will be on the kettlebell. The handle this time is parallel with the feet. Grabbing on with the right and then securing with the left, Lauren will pull that kettlebell as if zipping up a jacket, ending up in what we call that rack's position. Crushing the bell, vertical forearm, abs that can take a punch, hands on the bell, and return it to the floor. We'll alternate that on the other side. For that, Lauren will have to do three reps. Ooh, a little odd on that one, Lauren, but that's okay. I'm odd. Parallel handle with the feet. Your hinge stance is unique to you. Something just probably outside of hips is a nice universal place to be. Set up the hip hinge. My right hand is going to grab that kettlebell. The left hand secures it over top, shoulders are packed, body preloaded, zip, pull, that hip extension to the rack position. If you feel you need to change your base of support, please do. Hold for five more seconds, core brace, glute squeeze, firm tension into the ground, open your stance, two hands, return, come up barehanded. Take a breath, wiggle it. How's the grip? How's the abs? Other time, other side. Hinge, grab on, secure it with the other. The shoulders are packed, our body is preloaded in a plank, and zip to pull up to the rack. Adjusting feet is allowed. Core braces is unnecessary. Glute squeeze, another mandate we must uphold. And for five seconds, we'll hold it. Slowly bring that other hand close together, adjust your stance as needed, and return to the floor and shake it out. Lauren's turn next. One Squat. more set of squats. Let's start underneath us, get organized, then turn out, point to transfer, toe ball heel lands. There we go. Now pull that floor together and start pressing the knees over the toes. Check in as your shoulders stacked over your hips. Now drive down and away to stand tall. Repeat, pulling the floor together, knees press over toes, stay. Try to leave the heels. Holding for three, two, then heels come down, straighten up. Last one, pull floor together, fire up adductors as you go low. Heels leave the floor. Keep them off the floor as you try to straighten those knees. Finding that balance, pressing the inside of your heels forward. Then knees go back over the toes first. Heels find the floor. Press to tall. Point, shake, qua. Point, qua. shake, and out. There is another position of a kettlebell that we've trained the last couple weeks. The firing range. We've been there already today in the kettlebell, excuse me, the TGU warm up there. And we'll get back to there under a load or with your body weight to groove that pattern for safety and strength. Come on down to the floor and maybe Lauren will cue me through this one so she gets a little bit of a break. Come on down and watch this for a second first. No rules, get to the floor. Get it down. You always start in your cuddle, very important for a lot of things. In your cuddle, your bottom hand will grip, your top hand will cuddle over top. With two hands rolling to your backside, use two hands to press that bell into the air. Once there, establish a nice solid base, and when you're ready, remove the second hand. Place it on the floor, oh, 45 degrees from you. Key points where you're holding that firing range position is your forearm vertical. Bell 
more off to over top of your shoulder, outside arm, not over top of your face. Shoulders packed like you're juicing an orange in your armpit. Feet are heavy in the floor for three, two, two hands on your bell. Pull down with that vertical forearm and then roll to cuddle. I don't think I got out of that. I think we all have to do that again. All right. If that sounds familiar, let's do that with the kettlebell low. If that's something brand new, a light, light dumbbell, just a closed fist, and listen to the cues as we go. 20 seconds or so. Position. Yeah. Cuddle. From the cuddle, we'll roll to our back. One more. Two 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 more. The armpits or shoulders are pulling towards the hips. Is that arm, the arm, extended and reaching the vertical? Still endurance. Oof. How is that kettlebell feeling on your forearm? That's something we gotta get used to too. And in three seconds or less, we'll go two hands on the bell, bring it through the body, and then cuddle and leave it right there. Leave it. Let go of it. Put your body around that kettlebell and we'll repeat the same thing on the other side. My pinky grip is near the corner so that the callus line of the hand sits flush with that bell. From here, cuddle, breath, prepare, roll to your back, the yup, two-handed press, and when ready, take the second hand away, placing it at the side. With the shoulder blades retracted and depressed, pulling to the hips, the forearm is getting vertical towards the ceiling, perpendicular with the floor. Holding for about 10 seconds more, put tension into the ground through the hand, the foot, brace the core, maintain your breathing, and then two hands on, cuddle it to the floor, and then down. Let's get up via the get up protocol. From here, left hand across chest, other arm out to the side. Extend the hip, pulling on the elbow, just like in the warm up. Then our tall sit. In our tall sit, we'll sweep, press the floor away to assemble in our lunge, square the lunge, come up to tall. Shaking that out. Little bit of your discretion or your choice here. I would like to explore a weighted lunge. Hey, we've never done lunges. Well, some of us have. If you have never done a lunge, perhaps with body weight. If you're ready with us, either in your goblet hold or in your rack, let's do three lunges per leg. What are you gonna do? Me? Goblet or rack? Goblet. Goblet. Follow along with Lauren as she does three repetitions in a goblet hold lunge. On one side, single leg. So just like I did to get into my goblet hold, I'll use my hinge, overhand grip, pull catch. I bring my feet underneath me, single leg, step back, controlled descent. I like to encourage knee touches the floor like our get up, all the way back to tall. Step back, lunge, control down, press to tall. When I say knee touching the floor, I don't mean slamming, I mean a light graze. Light step. Hinge, place down. Did you follow along with Lauren in that goblet? Then you get a rest. If you're with me in that rack, let's get three lunges in the rack position. Right hand on, cuddling it with the other one, pulling, zip, up the body. I'll take the leg that's loaded, dropping it to the back, nice and control. Hup, to the top. Breath in on the down, controlling gravity, and extending to the top. One more time for that third sure that repetition. Yo, to the top, open stance, return to the ground, and come up barehanded. Second side for those who did the goblet. Cheek clean to the goblet hold, addressing your stance, feet underneath of hips, descending the lunge to that tall stand. Three repetitions, safe, full ranges of motion, and going slower, is harder, so try that. Rather than doing 20 of them fast, try doing three of them slow. All right, rackers, rack that. Zip, keeping that forearm vertical, step back lunge. 
As you're in that step back lunge position, making sure your shoulders are still stacked over our hips and we're not getting in that forward lean posture. Stay tall, stay braced. <laughs> Open stance, return to the ground. Ah, nice to be done that. Let's get back to the floor one more time, adding on, if allowed, to the firing range. Go down on the floor, Lauren. Body weight first, we'll cue it through. The firing range position comes up. From here, press the foot in the floor. Press the foot in the floor and pull to that elbow. Then could we control ourselves back to the ground? Perhaps three repetitions of a hip extension pushing and then levering and controlling ourselves back to the ground. We'll switch after three, same thing on the other side. Join us with a body weight example as Lauren just showed, or underneath that bell, progressing the firing range to the first movement of our loaded getup. No rules if you're up. Let's get down and start. Again, pinky cuddles near that corner side of the bell. Take a breath in the cuddle, roll to your back with a press. Yup. Two hands, assemble in the getup, extend the hip initiating the roll, and pull to the elbow. Take your time, no crashes as you return to the ground. Extend the hip, pull. Nice and slow, often my second and third one are more control. You're more warmed up, your core is saying, oh, I have to do that, as you return to the floor. Two hands on, pull down, and cuddle, and body weight, turn around. And same thing on the other side. Cuddle it to the firing range first with our hop, planks tension. Take the hand away as allowed. Extend the hip, press into the floor. Pull on the opposite elbow. Control to the ground. Reset, repeat. Hip extension, pull on the elbow. And nice and controlled down. Hip extension last time, pull, control, to the floor, two hands, down, and the cuddle. Get up from the ground one last time here. I believe it's that right hand across our body, pushing through, pulling on the elbow, tall sit. Bridge, sweep, slide up the leg, square up the lunge, core tension to stand and shake. Hmm. Oh yeah. One last movement for today, coming back to those squats and having a little bit of fun in the Shiko. Shiko squats, maybe a push up in between. We'll shake it out. We'll stay strong and we'll do it again. You don't know what a Shiko squat is. It's a sumo. A sumo version. In Lauren's sumo stance, pull yourself to your low position. From there, transition weight to one foot, connect the foot low. Extend, toe ball heel, repeat on the other side, and hold. Pause in the middle, because it's gonna be harder. I was talking to my mom this weekend, and she said, oh, I love these, but I hate using the balance aid. Please use it. Use that balance aid if you mm. need. Build stability, and then find low. And again, and low. Let's hang out here because it does make it harder. I was just going to say, I didn't like when you told a story here. <laughs> this time, balance on one leg. Stay low or climb just a little bit, then point and down. Press to one leg. Climb, extend, hang out in the middle for one last time, take a breath, and then power up. Stay low. Climb a little or climb a lot and extend and land toe ball heel. Last time to the side, climb a little, use the balance aid as you need, and then extend, land, power both legs down that you go up. Shake it. <laughs> Push-ups, Push okay. One, two, three, four, or five. Let's do one set of push-ups, finish strong, and again, the Never full range. that version of the Mambo number five. One. Two, three, four, five push-ups. Push-ups on the floor. 
I don't know how to finish that song. But five repetitions of our push-ups as a maximum. Again, go slow, go full range, make them tough. Here we go, butt squeeze like a full plank. We're gonna pull down and up, down Always and modify up. to your knees if needed. Down and up, do, and last one. Ooh, head bonk <laughs> on the floor. Up anyhow you want there. Fold, stack, make it up. There's lots of rules in our practice. One, safety. Two, have fun. Three, no rules. No rules. Make it up <laughs> just a little bit. Thank you so much for cool. following along with us today at this beginner body weight and bell practice. Lauren and I last night, oh my goodness, trained a lot of one arm swings. The craziness and the amazing stuff that Lauren shares with us in class on Tuesdays is possible because we do stuff like this today. Start with the basics, build your strength, and follow along to stay strong, to take care, and we hope to see you soon. My name's Ian. I'm Lauren. Together we're Bars and Bells. Thank you for joining, and have a good day. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye. Take care.